Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to Watchbox, and thanks for logging on. If you love this watch, email me, tmasso at thewatchbox.com. It's in the description below. Your purchase and pricing email question line for buying this or any watch you see on any Watchbox platform. Please reach out to me directly. Email tmasso at thewatchbox.com. Today, we are discussing the Patek Philippe Calatrava 6000G-010. The 2005 6000G arrived as a replacement to the long-running reference 5000 that came out in 1991. The original 2005 reference 6000 featured a black dial. This update from 2008 features a gray sunburst metallic dial, but still the white gold case and the distinctive lunette date dial. So let's take a look at the case first. It's 37 millimeters in diameter, 9 millimeters thick, and 46.5 millimeters from lug tip to lug tip with a 20 millimeter spacing between the lugs. The watch, we're going to zoom out here has an impressive presence, uh, principally due to the size of the lugs. They're not broad across the wrist, but you can see, relative to the size of the case, they are awfully long and angular. They have a lot of presence, and they give this watch a unique broad stance. So though it's a 37, it really does look quite a bit larger, maybe even as large as a 40, but because it has a domed bezel that is quite flat and a thin profile overall, it fits easily underneath the cuff, I can recommend it for a wrist as small as 13 centimeters circumference, and it is very impressive. The watch includes a strap of large rectangular scale alligator leather in dark brown with a semi-gloss finish, a little bit of bolstering to add some thickness, a sheer cut side showing you the layers of leather you can see on the underside, calf skin underneath the alligator. It is a Patek Philippe factory strap in outstanding condition with pull tab spring bars. You can quickly remove the strap without resort to a tool. And then we have a full Calatrava cross buckle on a full Patek Philippe single fold deploying clasp and this is your insurance policy to prevent accidentally dropping your watch while donning it or removing it. Let me remove my fingerprints from this case. Here you can see why I describe the lugs as strong and prominent and striking. They are all of those things. This watch features a blended lug profile with the case band and the lugs indistinguishable from one another, but they really do have an arcing, sprawling form from side to side. Stronger than you would expect on a watch of this size, which is why it looks bigger than it is. Now you can see that the bezel is domed, but it's a very flat domed profile. The case sides themselves are sheer and everything's in high polish. The watch is made of what is described in the industry as gray gold. That denotes an 18 karat white gold alloy that does not need to be rhodium plated. It never needs to be rhodium plated to make it look white. It's not quite as silvery white as rhodium plated white gold. You can see it has a little bit of warmth to it compared to something that is pure white like polished steel or platinum or rhodium. That warm color though is straight through so if you scratch it the same color is underneath it and that is not the case with conventional white gold. Patek Philippe since 2006 using the the more expensive gray gold. The dial. All numerals are radially arrayed, and many folks have remarked that this looks a lot like the dashboard instruments of a vintage sports car, and truly it does. That's always been my assumption that this was inspired by a vintage Porsche or Mercedes or perhaps Alfa Romeo or Jaguar. It is a very good looking dial with a lunette style indicator for the date, which runs radially around the dial. You have off-center sub-seconds. That was carried over from the reference 5000. Then a sort of piano key center track against which hours and minutes can be read individually. The watch does have a lovely gray sunburst metallic dial, and then all of that on top of a caliber 240 PSC. So you have Petit Second Calendrier, and it is the 240 micro rotor automatic. So the 240 is an automatic winder, pivots on ceramic ball bearings for efficiency, so the rotor's on ceramics, 48 hour power reserve, high horology and chronometer style adjustment in five positions, a free sprung gyromax style balance with an anti-magnetic silicon hairspring. It beats away at 21,600 vibrations per hour. You can see this version features the Patek Philippe seal. So from mid 2009, they would have featured the Patek Philippe seal. Prior to that, they would have had the Geneva Hallmark. 27 joule movement, all of this 30 meters water resistant, nicely decked out in a combination of engine turning in two sizes on the base plate, Cote de Genève across the rotor and the bridges, mirrored on glage, which you can see lighting up underneath my finger, beveled on the edges of the bridges. The same mirrored treatment given to the jewel and the screw sinks. All screw heads have been chamfered on their slot and around their circumference. And overall, it is a very handsome movement, a very handsome watch. And you adjust the calendar using a pusher adjuster on the flank of the case. The micro rotor, and this 
caliber 240 is considered the premium of the two Patek automatics. The micro rotor gives you the bigger case back view than you'd have with the center rotor. Nothing is blocked with the micro rotor, and the micro rotor is as thin as a manual wind movement, so you wind up with a very slim case. Reach out to tmasso at thewatchbox.com for purchase and pricing details of this discontinued Patek Philippe Calatrava 6000G.